morning. It is Swarm Trap Deploy Day. This is the first week of September. It is a little bit late in the year for swarms, but they do also happen this time of year. I want to go into a little bit of explanation on how I make my swarm traps uh, and give you ideas on how you can do it for very, very inexpensive. These particular swarm traps are, were throwaway buckets from a Chinese restaurant, so there's zero money in the bucket. You can go buy them at Home Depot or Lowe's and they're not real expensive, but by the time you buy the bucket and the lid, I would say you're gonna have $10, $15 in the bucket. And then depending on whether you have scrap wood, you're gonna have some money in the wood. But what I did with these, and I will put a link to the original video that I got this idea from, I changed my mind a little bit because I really like these buckets versus the ones you buy at the big box stores. I prefer the food grade bucket and also I like the way these buckets are made with a spout. But anyway, we'll move over here to a bucket we can get into and show you a little more detail about it. Like I said, this was a soy sauce bucket. This is a food grade bucket. And I've already removed the screws to help hold the lid on. So we're gonna go in here and show you a little bit about the inside of this and how we make it. Also, this is the, the, the lid that uh, closed the spout up on the bucket, screws off that normally would not be on there. That is if you catch the bees, you want to transport them. There's ventilation holes drilled into this. You just merely screw it on there because the bees will come and go. They like this size hole. This is pretty close to what they would normally seek out. And you just screw it on there. Take your bucket off the tree. You're good to go. But let's look inside here and show you a little bit about how these are set up. This lid normally has three screws holding it on so it doesn't come off. So we'll take the lid off and we'll look inside. Inside I've got some ventilation holes drilled around the inner lid. Also a couple holes in the bottom. Should any water get into this, we don't want it to collect so it'll drain out. Up top you see I've got my swarm lure which is a Q-tip and a baggie with Swarm Commander sprayed into that. To give it the lemon grass smell. You can use Swarm Commander or if you want to get by less expensive you can use lemon grass oil. These top bars came out of a War A hive. Bees like the older used top bars and the reason I set this configuration up is I run both War A and Langstroth. So if I get bees in this I can very easily move these top bars over to an existing War A hive and minimal disruption to the bees or I can take these top bars and tie them into a Langstroth frame very easily with a couple tie wraps we're good to go. All the wood you see in this hive is no cost. This is pallet wood which you want to get the pallet wood that's heat treated that way it doesn't have the chemicals in it so that's what these are cut out of. The top bars are also cut out of the same pallet wood. Bees have lived on these top bars and the pallet wood, as long as it's heat treated, had no detrimental effects. In the back, you will see there are three screws. One's above, you cannot see, here and here. That holds this piece on the back, which is also a piece of wood from a, from a pallet. And that's what we use to attach this to a tree, a post, or whatever we're going to use very very simple concept very inexpensive to make there was some kind of little something flying around while i was making these yesterday i had honeybees checking them out before i ever got them together i will tell you they do work i will tell you the bad thing about them keep check on them because bees will build these up very quickly there's the rumor you have to have the big bigger boxes to get them to come to it i run both they both work. The buckets work. The bigger boxes will work. The key is being around some bees, whether they're going to go in or not. And the other key is your attractant. Either use lemongrass or Swarm Commander. And that's pretty much everything on the inside of these. I will do a video on placement today, showing you where I put them. And I will add that here as well. So that's pretty much it. I have a total investment on these swarm traps, there's five I've made of some paint. And I do have some time invested. 
uh, the paint was ten dollars for for a gallon of oops paint i do like going with more of the neutral natural colors the original person built these did them in black and he put his in the shade that's fine and good but you can't always get them in the shade i still prefer shade because we are talking about a plastic bucket. It does have some ventilation holes, but nothing like a wooden hive would have. So do bear that in mind. You do not want to cook your bees if they get in there. And you do want to check these. I would say every week if possible, uh, no more than every two weeks. The reason I say that is I had one that I knew they were in there. I was very busy, did not have time to get them out. They were in there fine for three weeks. The fourth week, I was going to move them over to a hive, and they left. And what had happened, they had built this out quite a ways. I'd say the comb was down at least this far on all the top bars. They were doing great. Small hive beetle got in there, and in our area, we have a huge problem with small hive beetles. And that's the reason that I believe they left. They, they, they left the hive. That's another reason they swarm. If they have high counts of small hive beetle or varroa mite, which in this, of course, you're not going to be treating, um, you need to get them out of here fairly quickly. Anyway, enough of that. I will get to another video on actually deploying these things and how I put them up and uh, hope you enjoy what information I can share with you. I'm just sharing what I learned and what works and does not work for me. And I'm saying if you have the time, and you can go find these, preferably a food grade bucket, uh, use these. One other thing I do on the preparation of these, I almost forgot, and it is in the other person's video. I take sandpaper and I sand, and you can see a little bit of the sort of debris and rub beeswax in there. That gives the bees a rough surface to crawl on because they don't like it slick. Plus the smell of the beeswax, they like that, helps lure them in. Thank you, have a great day. Thank you.